A very warm welcome to uh, my Revival family. You're probably thinking, you're pretty crazy, thinking that it's warm here, it's freezing cold. But not where I am. I'm in uh, Mississippi, the city of Yazoo City. And um, that's in America, if you don't know. And um, I'm going to be here for the next three months with a beautiful family. And uh, just going to be spending some time with them and helping them with their online schooling. So I've been given this amazing opportunity just to do some travel, to meet new people, and just to spend time with God in wonderful places like this. So for me, it's a very warm welcome. Um, I'm sorry that I, I'm missing winter. No, not really. Uh, summer is definitely my favorite season of the year. So I'm going to just skip winter, if you don't mind, and I'll be back in time for the summer to hear all the stories. Um, God has given me this amazing opportunity, uh, something that I, I only could dream about. And I'm sorry that uh, my family and friends that I've left behind can't share this with me. So um, I've been sending a lot of photos and uh, just stories that, I've, um, that have happened along the way. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, I hope that I can encourage you in some sort of way. I know that things are, are going crazy at the moment in Southern Africa with all the lockdowns and uh, the riots, that, the rioting that's been going on in South Africa. These are troubling times, but um, as believers, we shouldn't be surprised because Jesus said in the last days, these things would happen. So we shouldn't be surprised at, uh, um, at the world and the way that it's going at the moment because we know that Jesus is coming soon. And things are not going to be easy, but Jesus does promise us that uh, he will never leave us nor forsake us. So um, I'm at the king's home. If, uh, if I was to walk that direction, about 15 meters, uh, you would get straight through my bedroom window. And that's how I get to and from the, the dam early in the morning. Uh, my second morning here, um, I couldn't sleep because of the time differences. So I was awake, wide awake at 5 o'clock. So I, I borrowed one of the, the fishing rods and came out. And I caught my, my first bass fish in America. And um, I've been fishing ever since. You can't fish um, anywhere past like half seven because it's really hot. And there's no point in coming out here until at least well after six o'clock in the evening. Sun goes down right about half past eight, quarter to nine. So it's hot, hot right until then. So I've been fishing. Um, I've enjoyed fishing my whole life. I've loved fishing. Uh, I've been blessed in the waters. I can remember a time when uh, my brother and I, when we were children, we, we, we got the opportunity to get on a, a boat in, in Kariba to go fishing for the whole day. And we, we tried our best. It wasn't a great fishing season and maybe the guy didn't know the lake. But uh, I, I caught the only fish of the day. Um, and it's often been like that uh, where, where we've gone out and fished and I've caught uh, fish, it just seems to happen that way. And um, I've got a rod out at the moment. Um, the first day I came fishing, I thought that the bass were huge right on the side of the road, uh, the, the lake. And, uh, and uh, Nick said to me, those aren't bass, those are carp. And they're really big. He doesn't fish the carp. So I thought I need to try and fish the carp. So I've got a rod out there at the moment. So if my rod goes, I might just have to... Uh, to leave the video for a little bit to go and catch the fish and I'll show you afterwards. If I don't, it's not the best time of day to be fishing, so I'm not expecting much. But um, yeah, you know, in all this turmoil, we have encouragement. We have, I, I was listening to Pastor Nate's sermon and how he was encouraging us through these times. And hopefully today I would be able to do just the same and encourage you as, uh, as we move forward in this season in our, in our lives, in our nation, uh, in, in, in our continent. So as much as I like to fish, so does the enemy. When I fish, I like to use different uh, bait. I've got some rubber worms here. And um, this color here, the uh, Super Salt Plus Chart Pepper Lizard. This has been the favorite of the bass. They, they kind of just seem to go for this one at the moment. So you even get... A Rapalas, I haven't had a chance to, to use one of these. I don't think I will, um, unless I'm really not catching. But um, I, if, you, if I want to catch fish, I've got to have the right tackle. 
This here is, is the fishing rod that I've been loaded. It's, it's a really cool one. Um, and, um, and it's got all the, the thrills, the frills and, and bits that you need to, to catch a fish. In America, they call these things a pole. So when I say, can I borrow your rod, they're not too sure what I'm, what I'm saying. So this is a, a pole or a fishing rod. You need a fishing rod, a reel. You need a hook to catch the fish. Um, and then you need your bait. So I don't know if you, you can see it from there. I'm using one of these, these lizards to catch uh, the bass later on when it's a bit cooler. So, um, yeah, so the enemy too, he likes to fish. He likes to go out there with his hook and his bait and to catch us. And today I just want to, uh, to make us aware of the enemy's traps in our lives. And, uh, and to ask the question, what bait is he using to catch you? You know, what, what, things, what, what things attract you? Is it, is it food? Does he dangle food in front of you and you just go after food? Is it alcohol? Is it sex? Is it an offense? Is it racism? Social media? Gossip? Negative thinking? World news? Pride? You know, the need to impress God. What is it that the enemy has at the end of his hook to catch you? You know, the enemy, he knows your weaknesses. The enemy knows what you go for. And I bet you he has a tailored man plan to take you out of the pond, to take you out of the dam, so that you will be separated from God's people and, uh, and, and, and God himself. So... If you can identify what it is that the enemy is using to attack you, you're not going to fall for it. So today I just want to uh, briefly go through a few tools, a few things that we can use to help us to identify what the enemy is using against us and what's keeping us away from having that better and stronger relationship with God. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is just to go sit down, to take out a pen, and your notebook, and just to think about what your weaknesses are. Um, some of us have a lot of them. Some of us have just a few. Mostly the wives and the women, they, they only have one or two weaknesses. Us guys, we may sit there a bit longer. But go sit down, I encourage you, and you will be able to pinpoint just a few areas in your life that you really struggle with, if you don't know them already. But it's good to put them down on paper and identify, say, these are my weaknesses. This is what's keeping me from having the relationship that I could have with God and with other people. So sit down. What is it? Is it stress? Are you always stressed about everything? Is it fear? Is it confrontation? What's your weakness? Is it television? Is it social media? What is it that keeps you from God? Write it down. The second thing is stay alert. Be alert. In 1 Peter 5 verses 8, it says, Watch out for your enemy the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy wants to devour you. So you need to recognize and identify the trap. You know, sometimes when I'm fishing and I keep catching fish, I'm wondering if they're the same fish because I, I don't keep them for the pot. I throw them back. Sorry, um, those who, who like to eat their fish. I like to throw them back. And I'm wondering if I'm catching the same fish over and over again. Um, but I think not because I think they would recognize and say, I fell for that trap the first time. I'm not going to fall for it the second time. But yet we as human beings, we tend to fall for the same trap over and over again. So identify, identify, recognize what the devil is using against you. And, 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 and use it against him. You know, often our, our weakness or the, the area in which the enemy wants to attack us most is the area in which God wants to use us the most too. So areas that you are most passionate about, the enemy wants to take you out on those. And one of those for me is, is marriage and relationships. You know, I, I love relationships. I love the idea of marriage. I love the idea of a happy and successful marriage and, and children, godly children that, that grow up and follow the ways of the parents. I believe in that and that's the area that I find the enemy has attacked me most in my walk 
um, in, in, in my life. So identify those areas and know in those weaknesses you can overcome them for God's glory at a later stage in your life. So the third thing I want you to do is to humble yourselves before God. In James 4 verses 7 it says, So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We all know that scripture. So we need to humble ourselves. In some translations it says, submit to God. Submit to God. Humble yourself and realize and say, you know, we can't do this alone. We're not a, we're not a one-man no, a one man band. We're not a lonely island. We need God. We need other people around us. So we need to submit to God's purposes for our lives, the journey that he's, he's put us on. Humble ourselves and say, God, I'm just a man. I can't do this uh, without you. So we humble ourselves before God. Let's not let pride get in the way. Come in line with the truth that God has for us. You know, when, uh, when you're full of fear, we sing the song, I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. So submit to what God says about you, not what the enemy says about you. You're more than a conqueror. You're not a failure. You will succeed. God is for us and not against us. So whatever it is that you're struggling with, God has a word for that. So get in line with whatever that is. The fourth thing that we need to do is also James 4 verse 7 is resist the devil and he will flee for you from you. So the first thing we do is we humble ourselves before God, we resist the devil, and then he will flee from us. Did you know we have the power to resist the devil and what he dangles in front of us? We don't need to go for the lure. We don't need to go for it. We can resist it and say, God, I'm, this is not what you want for my life, and I'm not going to go down that path again today. And we can resist him. And you know, we don't even have to fight him. We just say, stop. And God will do the fighting for us. Isn't that an amazing promise? So if you're trapped, caught up, you know, you're caught up, you're trapped, you've been caught, there's good news for you too. You know, there's good news for the fish that I catch because I put them back. The enemy doesn't want to put you back. But there is good news for those who feel like they've been trapped, for those who they've, 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 they've gone for the same lure over and over again, and they're feeling rather silly. Do you know what? There's good news for us. In Isaiah 61, verses 1, this is the scripture that Jesus uh, read out when he first went into ministry. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to take the, the fishing net, the keep net from the enemy and to release you back into the dam. That's what Jesus did. You know, what? we do not have to continue to be bound up in our sin. We don't have to be, continue to be bound up in, in, in the trappings of this world, the fears of this world. Jesus came to set us free. We have that choice. Either we can continue to be trapped or we can choose to live a life God has called us to do. So my final encouragement to you today. I told you it was going to be short and, uh, and that's exactly what it is. My final encouragement to you today is found in John chapter 28. Oh, there goes my rod. No, no, no. Focus. It wasn't my rod. It was the air conditioner. Right, John chapter 10, verses 28 says, I give them, you, eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. No one can snatch you away from me. God has given us a promise. Jesus has given us a promise that no one will snatch us from his hand. If you've given your life to Jesus, if you are born again, you are his. He loves you. And he's going to hold on to you. You know what? Even when we do go astray, even when we take the bait of the enemy, and we fall and we're trapped, you know, we too can be rescued 
by God because He will never leave us nor forsake us. So I just want to encourage us to encourage you today. You know that, that life is good even through all of this. That life is good even when there are riots. You know, we may be affected by it. We may be um, hurt by it. But we have a God who loves us. And when we leave this world, we're going to a place where there's no more tears, no more death, no more sickness, just God's presence and His majesty. So I want to encourage you today just to keep going, just to keep enjoying your life for God, not for yourself, but for submitting your life to Him and enjoying the life that God has called you to do. You know, I never thought um, that I would ever come to America. I never thought that I would uh, get to see the things that I've already seen and still so much more. Next weekend, I'm off to Nashville. Do you know Nashville is the capital of country music and I just love country music. So we're going to drive through there. I've got to stop him at some of the places where some of my favorite uh, musicians have sung before. Um, maybe stop at a music store and go and try some of the guitars. I was just Googling, there's a guitar, like a second-hand guitar from 1936 for 90,000 US dollars. Like, maybe I could, like, can I play that? I'll let you know. But, you know, these, these are dreams. And, and, I, and as I was flying here, you know, it was all kind of a rush because it was one thing after the next. As a, and um, I, I got to sit in the plane. And, and it was for some time, eventually, the stewardess came and, and was serving dinner. And um, she brought my meal in front of me. And I sat there on this plane with my supper in front of me with all the nice trimmings and things. And I just thought, why me, God? Why do I get blessed so much? There's so many people in Zimbabwe who would, who would benefit from this, who would love this opportunity. Why me? And you know what? God doesn't love me more than he loves you. You know, I, I, I get into trouble just as much, if not more, than you do. But we're all His children. And the Bible says that if we delight in Him, He'll give us the desires of, his, of your heart. And uh, I don't know where, why I came here. I just know that He sent me here. And um, if it's just to rest and to relax and make friends and connections, then so be it. But if He has a greater calling, then I'm, I'm all for it. But I do miss my family. I do miss my friends. I've left behind uh, my three children. Um, most of you know them, Daniel, Bella, and Cameron. And uh, we get to, to chat a bit on FaceTime, and my parents, my brothers and sisters, and uh, my special friend. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard being away and being so far away. You guys are, are really fast asleep now. Um, and it's only 3 o'clock here in the afternoon. So uh, be encouraged. Your story is not over yet. Just be alert. Be watchful. The devil wants to take you out. And if you can recognize the things the enemy has put in front of you and resist them, you will continue to live the life God has called you to. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, please don't be jealous. Right? Please don't be jealous. Things are not as cracked out as they, they will. There's, there's stories I'll, I'll tell you when I get home. But... Uh, yeah, America is beautiful, and, um, but just keep trusting God. And He will, uh, he will bring to, to life the things that He's called you to do. So be faithful, and uh, let me just pray for you as, as we go. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this time together. Thank You for the opportunity that I have to, to travel and spend time with new people. Thank You, Lord, for, for the people back home who are faithful, and every day do the same thing. But Lord, may you bring something new and refreshing into their lives, I pray. Give them opportunities that will blow them away. And Lord, today I ask that you would especially remind them of the strength that they have in you and that they too can resist the enemy. Help us, Lord, our weaknesses to become our strengths. And may we glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.